Hey everyone, welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, we are going to work on an HDR image. Basically, we are turning this raw file into this final image. As always, you can follow along by downloading the raw file. You can find the download link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. So that is the base picture. You can see we are working on an HDR file. That means we have a lot more dynamic range. So I could basically bring up the exposure all the way to get a lot more details in the shadows. And at the same time, I could of course bring down the exposure a lot more to get all the details in the sky. So that is super helpful for sunrise scenes like this, where you have a high contrast between the bright sky and the dark landscape in the foreground. Before working on the exposure, however, I do want to change the profile to Adobe Landscape just to bring up the saturation a notch. Also, I want to change the white balance. In this case, I'm going to slightly bring up the temperature, giving this shot some more warmth. We could touch the tint as well, getting rid of that slight purple color cast by just bringing down the tint a notch, but I think that looks pretty good this way. Now on to the exposure. The base image does look pretty good already. You can see on the histogram, there is a little bit of an exposure while all the details we need are available in the brightest areas. So first off, I'd like to bring up the exposure, revealing some more details in the foreground because I think this looks pretty nice in here. Here we are at a very good spot. Of course, raising the exposure will lessen the details in the sky, which is now rather blown out. So let's just bring down the highlights. I'm going to drop them quite a bit since of course we're working with an HDR image so it doesn't look weird if we are dropping it by a huge amount. I do want to further bring up the shadows just for even more details in the darkest parts and maybe even increase the whites very slightly. All right. I want to add some more contrast. I can do that by simply bringing down the blacks and of course, this will lead to some underexposure. You can see that when I'm holding down the Alt key, but you can also see the underexposure lies in areas which aren't that important to the image, like right there in the darkest parts. So it doesn't really matter. Then I do want this image to look sharp and clear. So I'm going to add a little bit of texture. And of course, I'm going to introduce some vibrance for stronger color tones. Let's bring up the saturation as well. Perfect. Now after the base adjustments, the image does look quite different already with a lot more details in the shadows and the colors are much warmer. At this point, I do want to continue by making use of some masking. So let's open up the masking panel and right away, I do want to target the sky with the sky mask. Photoshop has a pretty easy time selecting the sky here since you have a very sharp edge between the mountain and the sky. Still, I want to modify this mask somewhat by subtracting a radial gradient just from the brightest parts right there. And then I'm going to just bring down the exposure a notch and add a little bit of contrast. Perfect. Next up, I do want to add some glow on the very bright spot in the sky. For that, I'm going to add a radial gradient just like that, maybe rotate it a bit and make sure it's overlapping the mountains and the trees in the foreground. Then just bring up the blacks. Also, I could drop the dehaze for a stronger glow effect. That looks pretty good. Now we're losing some saturation in this area, so I might want to bring it up just like that. Okay. Next, let's use another linear gradient on the top part of the sky. And here I'm going to drop the exposure further just to make the very top a little darker like this. All right, looks good to me. Then I'm also going to create a linear gradient over the foreground. Here I'm just going to drop the whites because I want to make it darker, but I don't want to risk any further underexposure, which would happen if I would go on and drop the exposure, for example. In here, I also do want to introduce some clarity and some texture just to give this foreground patch a little more sharpness. 
then I do want to further enchant the glow. For that I'm going to use another radial gradient and there is another bright spot right there in the sky. So I'm going to overlap this piece of the mountain right there and again just bring up the blacks and drop the decays. Perfect. And then let's add one more radial gradient. I'm going to create a bigger one this time. And then once more increase the blacks. And that's it for the local adjustments. You can see we made this shot a lot more interesting by adding contrast locally and of course that glow effect on the right side. Next up we want to do some color grading. So let's start this in the color mixer tab. I'm going to start with the hue and I do want to bring down the yellow hue slightly just to give those clouds more of an orange color tone. Then I'm heading over to the saturation tab and I'm going to bring down the green saturation as well as the yellows and then bring up the orange tones. Maybe even the blue tones. Perfect. Not going to touch the luminance, instead I want to head straight into the color grading panel for the split toning. Here I'm working on the highlights first and as always with the sunset or sunrise images I'm going to apply a warm hue to the highlights. So somewhere around here and let's bring up the saturation but I don't want to go too crazy like usual. Just going to add a low amount of saturation here. Then we can do the same for the midtones with a warmer hue and a very low amount of saturation. But I'm quite happy how this is looking so far. All right, we're almost done with the Lightroom adjustments. I am not going to touch the calibration tab for this shot, but of course I want to sharpen this image in the details tab. So bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking and then just increase the amount of sharpening. Now that we are done with the raw adjustments, let's open up this image and finish it in Photoshop. The first thing I want to do is to kind of fix the color cast which is going on in the mountain in the distance. Right now you can see it's a little bluish. So let's create a curves adjustment layer and under the channels let's choose the blue channel. And I'm going to pick the point for the shadows and just drag it to the right. And thus we're just reducing the amount of blue in the shadows. I'm also going to head into the green channel and just do the same thing but not as strong. Just want to have a subtle change in here. All right. Of course this curves adjustment layer is now affecting the whole image which we don't want. So I'm going to make use of that layer mask and hit Ctrl I to invert it. Now I'm grabbing the brush, set the foreground color to white and I'm going to use a lower brush opacity like 50% and then I'm just brushing in on this mountain to get rid of that color cast. So if I turn off this curves adjustment layer you can see the difference and it's quite big. All right, I like how this looks so far. Next up I do want to brighten up this whole image. Again I'm using a curves adjustment layer for that purpose I'm just creating a point somewhere in the middle and just drag it up. And to add contrast I'm going to create a point in the darker areas and drag it down. Again this looks kind of weird when applied on the whole image. So I'm going to use a black brush. Let's set the brush opacity higher. And I'm going to brush away a few parts in this image. So especially the sky since this looks weird with increased brightness. Then I'm going to add some darkness around the very near foreground and I do want to darken the pond in the foreground as well. Okay I think that looks really good. Next up let's add a little more glow on the right side. For that I'm going to create a new layer and I'm switching the blending mode to hard light. I'm using hard light for more obvious harsher glow effects. If you're not a fan of this I would suggest to go with the soft light blending mode. Then I'm grabbing the brush and you can see I have set the foreground color to something very vibrant. That's because I want to have a very warm glow effect. Now the important part is to bring back down the brush opacity otherwise this is way over the top 
I'm usually going with something like 10% and then I'm just going to adjust the brush size, make it very small and then just brush over all those edges to add this glow effect. This works really good as you can see. We can also play around with the brush size if you want, make it a little bigger for a stronger effect, just like that. Let's see if you can add some glow on the other side as well. But I think this looks really, really good. At this point, we could play around with a little bit of dodging. So let's create a new layer again, switch the blending mode to overlay, grab the brush tool once more. And again, I'm leaving the opacity of the brush rather low to not overdo it. And I just want to paint in a little more brightness right there in the foreground. And then use a black brush to paint in some darker spots but I think I need to drop the brush opacity even further for that. And I'm going to make the very near foreground darker. Maybe some parts of the sky up here. And maybe the mountain, even in the distance. But I think this looks much, much better. Finally, I'd like to bring down the opacity of that dodging layer, because I do want to handle it with care. Otherwise it might look strange. All right, but I think that's it for editing this HDR image with a bit of Photoshop. I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. As always, if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.